Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the Bandai Figurize Standard Dragon Ball Super Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Son Goku, or Super Saiyan Blue, or just Super Saiyan God, or whatever else you want to call it, because he's had a few different names. So this is definitely the model kit, not the action figure. Different scale altogether, we'll show you that in a second. But this thing does do some things really well in terms of being an action figure. And in terms of being a model kit, it's not too bad either. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. Now this guy stands just about 7 and 3 quarter inches to the top of his hair, which makes him just about 6 and a quarter to the top of his head, which would be like right around there. That makes him roughly 16 centimeters to the top of his head and about 19 and a half to the top of his hair. So he does have a whole lot of size. For those of you wondering how he compares to your standard figure arts figures, I've told you before, you don't believe me, he's way out of scale. Way out of scale. He's way too big. These guys are not interchangeable. You can see he's just way bigger than Goku. So don't get him to... To be in the same line, it won't work. If you just want to get the figure, then fine, but it's not going to be in scale. It's very much larger. Okay, so now this guy. Like I said, he does function as an action figure to some extent, but he is still clearly a model kit. The colors are molded nicely. They're relatively desaturated, though. Uh, the blue's pretty good, and the hair is really nice. I love the color of the hair. It's very, very well done. Nice and metallic, kind of pearly. But the orange is very dull, and the skin is just okay, and it definitely would look good with some paint. Doesn't have any paint, obviously, so like I said, it's still a model kit. We do have stickers for the logo on the chest. The stickers are fairly thin, and applying them wasn't too bad, but they still don't quite fit properly. For a model kit, it's pretty good, but it definitely doesn't replace what we get in like a figure arts figure. It's just not, although lately they don't have any paint on them either, so we're not too far off here. They're okay. You can see it does have some wrinkling in it from how I put it on, which is good and bad depending on how you want it to look, but it's not bad. It's just not great. We also have a sticker for the one face. We'll show you that in a minute. And then for the boots, we have all of these red lines or stickers, and they go on pretty easily, and they stick on well enough, but it's still clearly a sticker. So if you're not looking to repaint something, I would definitely suggest going with an actual action figure rather than a model kit because you're going to be stuck with stickers, no pun intended. Now before we get into the figure anymore, let's talk accessories. We do have the two different faces, one just standard normal looking face, and one where he's yelling, and you do have to put a sticker on the mouth for the tongue, and that's well enough, but it is a curved surface, and the sticker doesn't fit very well, it's just good enough. We have a few different hands. We have two fist hands, two open hands for his Kamehameha, and then one instant transmission hand, and that's it. And then we have his fully fired Kamehameha and his charging Kamehameha effect parts. And they are very nicely saturated translucent blue plastic. And they do come with, or at least the shot one, the fired one, comes with the extending little display stand thingy. So that's pretty cool. And then lastly, we get a little clear clip thingy that is meant to be used for one of the display stands that you get for like your, your Gundams or whatever, your model kits, that can connect onto those. I guess it might work with a Tamashi stand. Let's check. It can work. So you can connect it to your Tamashi stand if you want to. So that's pretty cool if you have one of those lying around. So that does it for the accessories. Not a ton, but probably enough. Now as far as the sculpt on this guy, it's pretty good. I'm very overall pleased with it. His arms seem maybe a little bit short, but uh, that's not really unusual for Dragon Ball artwork. So I think that's okay. So let's talk about the articulation. The head is on a ball peg with a hinge. So it can move around very well, and you'll notice the neck is also on a hinge. So it just it moves very well forward and back, no problem at all. You do have your full rotation, and it can lean a little bit side to side. So pretty much whatever you need to do with the neck, you can do. For the shoulders, we have this really big butterfly joint built right into the chest. Definitely not the best looking joint from the back, but it is fairly effective. For the shoulder itself, we have a ball peg, which is what it connects to the butterfly with, and then we have that hinge. The blue part just kind of floats on there. So we have pretty good range, better than horizontal, so that's good. Full rotation, no problem at all. Bicep swivel works just fine. Single jointed elbow, you do get better than 90, and it doesn't look too bad, so I like that. And then all of the wrists are just a really basic ball peg. And unfortunately, these pieces, they actually snap into place, so they're not going to hide that ball peg too well. You can kind of de-snap them, unsnap them. Wow. You can de-snap them. But you're going to end up with a kind of a flat 
spot on his forearm. So it's not really ideal. It's not the best situation. For the torso, we have a couple ball pegs and some hinges put together. So what you're really going to get, though, is a swivel at the lower waist and at the upper waist. But the upper doesn't do that much. But you have a really nice hinge mechanism that lets him pull forward and lean over pretty well. So that's pretty cool. It does lean back a little bit as well, so that's nice. You know, it works, it works pretty well. I like it. Full rotation. The belt does snap into place. For the hips, it's not unlike your figure arts, your older figure arts. You have a hinged ball peg in the crotch, so that lets the leg go up and down. And then you have a whole bunch of different pieces that connect and swivel around in the hip. So essentially, you're going to be able to get the leg almost completely out to the side. And then you're going to be able to bring it really, really far forward. It will put it off at a bit of an angle when you do that, but it does work very nicely. So that's good. You do have a thigh swivel technically, but it doesn't have much room to move. For the knees, you have a single jointed knee, but it functions really, really well. I don't understand why we can't get good knees on the figure arts, but we can on these model kits, which are significantly cheaper. Looks good, functions well, can't really complain about it too much. The foot will pop off if you pull it off on accident. It, it is a model kit. You have a shin swivel here in the boot, which is nice. I like that they included that. It doesn't have the most range in the world, but it's definitely enough, and I'll show you why. We have our hinge in the foot, which goes pretty far back. It goes not so far forward, but then we have that peg you just saw, which allows the foot to rotate. But it rotates like a Marvel Legends foot and doesn't give you that good of an ankle rocker. But you can rotate the boot and give yourself a proper ankle rocker. So I like that a whole bunch. So ultimately, it's a really solid model kit in terms of being an action figure. In terms of being a model kit, it's just fine. No problem at all for the price point. You really can't beat it. It's a really nice thing. It won't substitute into your figure arts line very well. But if you just want a cool Goku figure that's something you can put together and it's relatively cheap, go ahead and grab it. I think uh, I think you guys are going to like it. It's worth noting uh, for this guy, I didn't have to use tools for most of it, though I do recommend it. I do that just to test the, the fragility and for the speed build purposes. But for the hair especially, you definitely want to use nippers to separate the pieces. Uh, you're definitely going to break something if you're not exceedingly careful. Same thing for the effect parts. Definitely use the tools. You could get by without them if you absolutely had to, but I'm telling you, you really should use the proper tools. And it says so in the instructions, so follow those. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you come back for that. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And in the meantime, keep collecting. <laughs>